Restraints-based and trauma-informed practice are important concepts in caring for Indigenous peoples, but how do they fit together? Let's begin with the role that trauma can play in health outcomes for Indigenous peoples. Personal trauma refers to trauma that the person has experienced directly. Intergenerational trauma refers to the impacts of trauma that have been passed down from generation to generation. One example of this is the impact of residential schools. The separation of children from parents for many generations has caused deep harm that continues to be felt today. The core concept of trauma-informed practice is that it shifts the focus from what's wrong with you to what happened to you. It's about having a complete picture of an Indigenous person, their past and present, in order to provide effective health care. Trauma-informed practice is an approach that recognizes the widespread impact of trauma and understands paths to recovery. It integrates knowledge about trauma into policies, procedures, and practices, and it actively prevents re-traumatizing individuals by avoiding potential triggers. This means avoiding certain tones of voice, types of language, and behaviors. In order to deliver trauma-informed care, we must recognize the potential for trauma, either personal or intergenerational, and adapt our approach by seeking permission from the person before engaging in assessments or treatments. For example, if we need to ask someone to disrobe for a physical exam, we should provide an opportunity for conversation first or have another person present for support if requested. It is also important to recognize that colonialism and trauma may affect how people view, access, and interact with the healthcare system. This includes the indigenous person's willingness to seek care, receive treatment, trust healthcare professionals, and trust the system at large. Finally, we must also consider that indigenous women, girls, two-spirit, queer, and trans people are disproportionately affected by racism as well as gender-specific trauma. We can incorporate trauma-informed practice by involving both organizational and clinical practices that recognize the complex impact trauma has had on people. Key ingredients of trauma-informed practice include learning and recognizing the signs of trauma, learning and applying trauma-specific approaches, involving people in the treatment process, and engaging referral sources and partner organizations where appropriate. It is important for us to not only be aware of the impact of trauma on Indigenous people, but also to focus on the resilience and strength that the person brings to the healthcare encounter. This is where taking a strengths-based approach comes in. Strengths-based practice builds upon the person's strengths, seeing the person as resourceful and resilient when they are in adverse conditions. It is person-led and centered on outcomes using their strengths. It also enables people to resolve problems and deliver their own solutions based on the premise that people are experts in their own lives. In this case, it is our role to explain the care and treatment options available to the person we are caring for and to encourage them to make their own informed decisions. Both strengths-based and trauma-informed care are essential for improving health outcomes for Indigenous peoples.